This week's word of the week is going to be ropey, and then I put weld after it for ropey weld. And this came about because I was talking to one of my buddies that uh, has been in the uh, field of welding for many, many years. He's in his 60s, I want to say mid 60s, 60, 65. And, uh, you know, he said, You're the only person I've ever heard uh, say ropey weld, that weld looks ropey. And I thought, huh, I'm going to look on Google and see what uh, see what's out there. So I looked on Google, and sure enough, it was out there. And I never thought it was like an actual certified word, like the AWS would refer to it. I just always knew it, was, I knew it as a slang word, you know. So on a scale of 1 to 10, if you don't know what a ropey weld is, if somebody says, that weld looks real ropey, uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 not being a huge deal, 10 being a huge deal, I'm going to give it like a 2 for a couple of reasons. Um, number 1, it's a slang term. And number two, you probably won't have, a, have experience it a lot unless you're just starting out. Because once you get used to welding, you're going to have less problems. And this is a problem that usually occurs when you're first starting and your amperage is down a little bit. And, you, and somebody brings me a weld and I'll say, man, it's, it's high and ropey. So where did it originate? I don't really know. I always just assumed that it looks like a piece of rope on the weld because it's high like a piece of rope would be. And, you know, rope head is kind of the puddle look because it's usually twisted. So I always assumed that it was just, that was where it came from, but I have no idea where it actually came from. Um, so what does a high ropey weld look like? Well, first it's high, right? It's going to be more narrow than a, than a weld, than an ideal weld, and you're going to have less penetration, which I, I don't even know unless you cut it and put a notch on it, but it's going to be a high, narrow, low penetration weld. You put a bead down and somebody says, hey, it looks a little uh, ropey. So how are you going to fix that or what causes it, right? The main causes are very simple. It's low amperage. Your amperage is too low, that's why it's raised up. That amperage gets higher, it wets the bead out, so you don't get a ropey looking weld, all right? And I put voltage as well. So remember, if you're getting it, how you fix low amperage, you just turn the amperage up, right? And remember, if you're doing MIG, wire feed controls the amperage, so you turn the wire feed and the voltage up, and that's gonna help you get rid of that ropey weld. I feel like it happens a lot more with MIG, you hit more ropey welds with MIG, uh, maybe I'm wrong on that, I don't know, but you know, stick, you, you kind of freeze if you're too low, so you turn it up automatically. With MIG, you can still weld it, and then you get done, you're like, wow, that's really raised up and ropey looking. So, wider manipulation is another um, thing you can do to fix it. I guess I wrote that under causes, wider manipulation. It should be a narrower manipulation would be the cause, and you would fix it with a wider manipulation. So maybe you just need to weave it out a little bit like if you're in a T-joint, all right? So what we're gonna do is go out in the lab here and I'm gonna do a TIG weld, a MIG weld, and a stick weld. I'm gonna turn the amperage way down or the wire feed way down. And um, I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna try and make a ropey looking weld in all three processes. And then I'm gonna put the settings back to where I would normally run and then uh, run another bead. And so you can see a high ropey weld and then what one should look like. And I'll write down the parameters. So amperage, wire feed, uh, voltage, and uh, I'll put that on the plate so you can actually see that and show you what a ropey weld looks like. And I guess that's it, we'll get out in the lab. Not a real hard thing to fix, just turn your amperage up usually. So let's get out in the lab and we'll try and create some ropey looking welds. All right, here's a look at our MIG welding. And I gotta admit, I hate doing stringer beads without something to guide me like a joint, but here we are. I did the best I could to mess this up. All right, so the top one you can see is a 207 inches per minute at 16.3 volts. And the bottom one is 293 inches per minute at 18.3 volts. And what I'm going to do is do a shot like this, kind of above it and below it a little bit. And then I'm going to put the camera right on uh, the le a level playing field as the plate and shoot them from the end so you can see if they're higher or lower or wider or narrower. All right. So what we're going to do now is get into our stick. And we use 332nd 7018, so a, kind of a thinner 7018. But we'll grab that and take a look. So here we are looking at our 332nd uh, diameter 7018. The bottom was done at 60, which is pretty low. And the top one was done at 90. And you can see the bottom's a little bit higher, more narrow. It's not put together as well. It didn't wet it in as well. Did I mention the top one was at 90? I can't remember if I did. If I didn't, it was it done at 90. And it's a little bit flatter, a little more uniform. Moving on to TIG. All right, so these are our TIG welds. I had to move the camera to the other side because I couldn't see anything, and you can see 60. I could barely get the metal to melt, and you can see it's raised up and, and narrow, and then at 100, and I floored it the whole time I was at 60 with 100. I, 
I tried to not floor, or I tried to floor it the whole time, but I had to at the end because it was getting wider, and you can see it. It got a little wider, and there wasn't much I could do. I don't like to just floor the the foot pedal doing TIG, but I was trying to keep everything consistent at 60 and 100. So it says 100, but towards the end it probably wasn't 100. So what we're going to do now is pull the, the welds back out that we just looked at, and we're going to start looking at them from the end. All right, so I lied to you. I'm going to stay with the TIG, and then I'll get the other ones because it's already in the vise. And the one on the right is the 60 amp. The one on the left is 100 amp, and you can definitely see the 60 amp is way higher, more narrow. Good shot. Moving on. All right, this is the 332nd diameter, 7018. And you can see the one on the left is a little bit more wetted down. And the one on the right is just kind of high and, and ropey. All right, so I'm going to grab the MIG now and take a look at that. Here's a look at the MIG. The cold one's on the right, the ropey bead. And you can see the one on the left is a little bit wider. And it's built up just about as high, but I also had the wire feed way up on it, so... The one on the right is definitely a ropey looking weld. If somebody brought that to me, I'd say you gotta weave that a little bit more, turn the amperage of the wire feed up. What I'm gonna do now is try and find a ridiculously ropey weld in the scrap bin and show you that, because these are all polished up. Let's find something that's a little bit dirty. That proved to be harder than I thought. But I did find one, you can see, this might have just been a manipulation issue. And that's kind of what I was looking for. Let's see how high and ropey that is. Amperage needs to go up and a manipulation needs to be added to it. It looks like a stringer on MIG. So that's all we got for today. Thanks for watching and subscribing to TV Weld. Hopefully you know what a ropey weld is. And we will see you next time.